Hey, welcome, or oh, welcome back, to Four of Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, probably never. However, hopefully, you are watching me in black and white. Good lord, my hair's gone mad again. Uh, because this is the continuation of my pick series and I am delighted that the person I am collabing with today is the person who was first to ever join me on this series the lovely Nikki Raven my YouTube wifey so if you want to find out exactly what this looks like in glorious Technicolor assuming I've remembered to do it in black and white and if I haven't hey welcome to the future <laughs> if you want to see what this looks like in glorious Technicolor you want to know exactly which picture is our inspiration and which palettes we used to create this look Then, my friend, you have the best seat in the house. Grab a drink. Grab a snack. Put your feet up. And enjoy. Because here it comes. Hey, welcome back from the intro. Uh, the weather is kind of overcast and clearing up and overcast and clearing up. Uh, so I apologise if my white balance goes up and down, there's not a huge amount I can do with that when I'm partly natural daylight and partly LEDs, but hopefully the LEDs will mean at least you'll be able to see me. Now, fingers crossed, the intro is in black and white. Um, this is a continuation of my photo inspiration series. Uh, this is kind of a special one because the first person that collabed with me on this was my YouTube wifey, Nikki Raven. And the reason I call her that is because in that first film, when I messaged her and said, would she like to collab? And she's like, yes, she'd love to. In the film, she said, and she asked me to collab. I said, yes, so now we're married. <laughs> Which is, she, she does it so much cuter and so much funnier than, than I managed to just then. Um, so from that point on, I've always referred to her as my YouTube wifey. Uh, if you're wondering about my YouTube family, I have a YouTube wifey, I have two YouTube mistresses, they are my bitches of Eastwick, and I have a YouTube daughter, which is uh, Chelsea Murray. It's marvellous. And the husband doesn't mind. Um, I don't know if this... I bought this because Jessica... Um, as in stars Hollywood Jessica had got one. But I think I might have bought a knockoff version because this is small and it's slowly sliding backwards on my head. So I may at one point have to revert back to the horns because that does at least hold my hair back off my face. Um, yeah, so the first person I ever collabed with in this series was Nikki. And for some reason it's taken us this long to get round to collabing together again. Uh, so this is only round two with Nikki, bizarrely, even though I've done like six with some people, five with others, three here. We've been involved in group collabs together and she's had an awful lot of other things that she's been doing. So we finally managed to tie down a date that both of us could do, which is awesome. Um, now technically because I chose the picture last time, I said, did she want to choose, or should I just send a batch over the, because I've got a folder, every time I see a picture and think, that'd be a good photo inspiration, I pop it into a folder on my phone. So she said, no, 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 you just, you send me a, through, a few through, so I'm like, okay, fair enough, sent a, through, uh, a few of them through. The first picture that we did together was space, so it was planets, stars, nebulas, things. Um... And bizarrely this time, Nikki has also chosen one which involves stars, uh, but it's a more grounded photo rather than being out of space. 
I will put the photo here. As you can see, it's beautiful. And I love when... I, I'm so glad she chose this because it gives me an excuse to use a palette I haven't used yet. I finally picked up this uh, Viseart Petite Pro Soleil palette. Someone was selling it on Depop. And I'm just like, oh my goodness, yes. Because I've got another one of the Soleil palettes. But this will go perfectly with that because it's got the purples, it's got the yellows, it's got golds. Um, so I thought that would be ideal for the purples and the yellows and the way that the light is shining on the water gives you the golden effect. The only colour it hasn't got in there is um, a lilac, a pinky lilac lavender matte shade and a black. So that gives me an excuse to bring out my favourite of all time, which is my Hasina 2, because that has got a nice matte that I could use. It also has the black. And another purple, if I decide I need to put other purples in. I've got dark purple matte there, and I've got some more shimmers here to play with. So, um, this is still a teaching channel. Um, so, because of my chronic pain, and trust me, I've actually been up since half past four in the morning. It's currently half past eleven. It's taken this long for me to be able to sit here and film because of my back. I've tried a few times before and was just I just couldn't do it. I was as it is I'm probably going to be wiggling a lot and there's probably going to be quite a lot of jump cuts I'm going to have to take out and try. Hopefully you won't spot very many of them though. Hopefully my editing skills are those that you now will see a seamless transition. However, um, I don't blend very quickly because of my chronic pain, because of my fibro. Um, the, the, the motion that I use, which I've found most effective for blending colours, particularly on uh, slightly older or slightly looser eyelids, sends shooting pains right up my arm, right through my shoulder and up my neck. Um, so I, I don't blend very quickly, but I also when I started this channel I wanted it to be a teaching channel. I wanted people who'd never picked up a brush before to be able to follow one of my tutorials in real time. Um, so if I'm going too slowly for you, there's a speed widget up there. I'm not going to be offended if you use it. I'm not even going to know unless you tell me. And even if you do tell me, I don't mind. There's times that I have to... beginning of each day I go through and put a load of things in to watch later. And then go, how am I going to be able to watch all of those and all the other things that I've got to do to, you know, today? So I normally end up watching them at like one and a half or two, if I've got a lot in there. Some days I'm lucky, there's not many in there and I can just watch them at normal speed. But, um, you know, the speed widget is there, feel free to utilise it. I am going to be talking about eye shapes again, as I always do at the start of my films. So if you're a regular and you know what I'm going to say, feel free to fast forward until I wave a brush at you with some colour on it. Right, my face is washed, moisturised, SPF'd and primed uh, using my usual antiperspirant primer. Um, more details of that are in my description box, I've got a film about it in there. I also popped a little bit of the Paulus putty around my nose and my forehead because my pores were looking a little bit, they were noticeable shall we say. Right, let's get you zoomed in and when I say zoomed in I don't mean zoomed in so you can still see all of my face, I mean zoomed in so you can see what I'm actually doing even if you're on a phone. Um, the eye primer that I've got on is my usual Crow and Pebble eye primer in shade Blank Page Cotton. They do these in six shades. White is the lightest, which is what I've used. Uh, deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black, and there are three other skin tone shades. They have not sent me any PR. Everything I have from them and this is the second pot I've had of the eye primer. 
um, and the loose pigments, I've purchased it all myself. They have given me a discount code to offer to you, which is listed in my description box along with all my other discount codes. And those codes clearly state whether I earn from them or not. I do not earn from Cry and Pebble, and I have never had PR from them. Right. That should cover me with the new FCC guidelines in America as well as the ones in Europe. Good Lord. Now, eye types. Uh, I've actually got deep set eyes, which are, I've heard them referred to as double lidded eyes recently. But a lot of people with deep set eyes are told or mistakenly believe that they have hooded lids. Because when you read the description of hooded lids, transfer of colour from the mobile lid to the static lid, um, if you're cutting the crease you can't just cut through the socket, you have to cut onto the upper lid, and even when you're using glitter glues, with glitter you get a bare patch right through the middle of the crease. We both have those issues, that's why a lot of people think they have hooded lids when they don't. Now, I'm going to explain to you the difference between the two types of lid, and then I'm going to give you a workaround for each type. And the workarounds are different depending on the type of lid you have. Right. I know that sounds very complex, but I promise you it isn't. If I relax my brows and look straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see much, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if my static lid completely covers right down to my lash line, <clears throat> part or all of that mobile lid, that I have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. Right, I'm going to demo in this eye because this is the one that I'm blind in, so when I close it, this eye can still tell me whether I'm on camera and in focus. <clears throat> right, if I use this brush handle to cover my mobile lid and close my eye, you can see I've got as much lid space again, if not more, that tucks back away. <clears throat> so I'm just going to have a drink. I stop barking at you. And then if I cover my visible static lid and do the same, you can see I've got lid space there that tucks back away as well. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that people with hooded lids get. Right, the workarounds. If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush, and sketch out on your static lid a new crease line. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between your new crease and your brow, so use smaller blending brushes than those that are used in the tutorial. <clears throat> if I'm doing an editorial look, I'll go right up to the brows, I usually leave a space. If you have very little real estate between your new crease and your brow, you may have to go right up to your brow anyway. doesn't matter, you can still add a bit of brow highlight under the tail once you're done. Now, if you have deep set eyes like myself, what we have to do is when we relax, when we're putting colours through our crease, relax the brows and just check we've brought it up high enough that you can see it when our eyes are open. Right, I am going to start putting some colour on my eyes. I'm going to go in with a Morphe M139 and I'm going to start off with this purple here. Are they named? Do they have names? There's nothing on the packet there. Is there anything on this one? Oh, right, okay, so I'm going to have to keep the packet because it's got the names on the back. That's annoying because the other one that I've got, I think I threw the packaging away for. Yeah, I did. I've also got the Petite Pro 1, which is a more neutral one, as you can see. But um, I've loved the packaging for that, so that's frustrating. I must remember to keep the box for this one. So I'm going to go in with the shade called Lavender. That is not lavender. That is a purple. Lavender is much, much lighter colour than that. Good grief. 
Right, so I'm packing colour onto my brush. Uh, you can't really see the colour, but uh, if you're fast forwarding, now's the time to stop. <laughs> right. Normally I start up here. I'm going to start lower down. I'm actually going to start about here today. And I'm going to start off just with tiny little circular movements. Now I'm holding the brush right at the end to put as little pressure on as possible. And I'm just doing tiny little circular movements. I'd rather put a little bit of colour onto the brush and build the colour up slowly and then put too much on. Now the reason I like this eye primer is that it goes on dry so you can blend on it straight away. You don't have the issue <coughs> of needing to set it and then losing some of the depth of colour that you will get from your pigment shades that you're putting on. Now I'm going in this direction coming towards the nose and this direction coming back away. <clears throat> the reason I'm doing that, I'm 45 years old, I've lost 14 stone which is just under 200 pounds and the skin on my eyelids moves. But I know 20 odd year olds who have the same issue, just genetically. And by doing this, you're gently moving the skin around and stopping it from doing like a barcoding or a striping effect. Now on my left eye, which was pulled around an awful lot when I was a child at the ophthalmic hospital, I've got a super deep creasing here and this method doesn't always work at um, stopping the barcoding. I'm not sure I like this brush actually. So I'm going to clean that brush off and I'm going to grab a different one. Uh, I'm going to grab I'm quite a small one really. Let's grab this one. This is my boozy shop tapered blending brush. It is clean, it's just stained. So I'm going to go back into that hmm, lavender. It's not lavender, it's bloody royal purple, but what that is. And just continue, yeah, that's better. That pigment did not like that other brush. If you find that, if you find that you're having problems getting the pigment to build up, um, or that it's going patchy. First thing to do is try a different brush. I know it sounds daft, but not all pigments will work with the same brush. But I'm just doing little windscreen wiper movements here through the crease. I am probably going to deepen that up a little bit later. I do struggle just on this, this corner here and up here on both eyes with dry patches um, so I do end up getting a bit of patching here but that's not an issue because I'm probably going to go in with a deeper shade over the top anyway now you can see the difference that using a different brush has made just with blending that out I'm just going to Really gently buff that out. Shh, rude. So, Nikki. She is a year or two younger than me. And she is Dutch. Um, she has the most amazing bone structure. She, um, she shaves her head. So you really get to see her elegant uh, cheekbones and, and you know the whole sort of well, bone structure, as I was saying earlier. Um, she is stunningly beautiful. She has an absolutely amazing sense of humour. Um, and she's extremely, extremely knowledgeable 
when it comes to skincare. So I learned a lot from watching her in terms of skincare. I added squalene to my routine after watching some of her skincare films. Um, so, you know, and as well as that, she does a lot of collab, she does um, haul videos, she does um, friend mail where they sort of send each other makeup, um, palette reviews, a lot of things. She's just recently. Um, got onto the Revolution PR list. They sent her some uh, some palettes and stuff for you, which is awesome that she's being recognised like that. Um, so happy for her. And if you haven't already watched her, you are missing a real treat. You really are. I'm just sitting back and checking. <clears throat> that both eyes look the same because unlike some people I do not photoshop any of my looks I don't use any filters apart from very obvious snapchat filters where I give myself like a you know, Biggles moustache or a pair of cat ears or something um, but if I do upload pictures with snapchat filters on the first few that I upload will be non-filtered so you can see the look that I've achieved because I don't want anyone to look at one of my pictures and think oh I'm never going to be able to do that I'm never going to be able to make it look like that because I promise you if I can make it look like this so can you because I'm, not, I'm by far an expert right that's what I was talking about when I said about the barcoding so I do have to very very gently hold my lid out to sort that out but as you can see, I'm only holding it out as far as I need to. I'm not pulling it out to my ear. And as soon as I've sorted the barcoding out, I'll let go again. Now when I'm doing shimmers on the lid, I do have to, well, any, any colour on the lid, I do have to stretch this lid out, otherwise the pigment builds up in, um, in that crease. But it packs in loosely rather than being blended on and then throughout the day it'll start cascading down my face but yeah always sit back and relax your brows and just check that the shapes you've done both sides are the same because you can sometimes find that you have to do slightly different shapes on each eye to make them look the same um, like I said unless you're James Charles and you Photoshop the hell out of it and then just copy it over. I've got no time for that boy, I really haven't. Anyone who builds their whole career on a lie, how can you trust a word of what they say? It's just crazy. Absolutely crazy. But, Nikki you can trust. I like this purple but it is taking a bit of work to get it to not be patchy which is interesting because Viseart is not a cheap shadow but purple is the most difficult colour to create followed by green, blue, red and to a certain extent yellow but purple is by far the most difficult. Um, but this little mini Soleil palette just, the colour store just really cool to me with the purple and the red and the yellow and the gold. It just, I'd wanted it for a long time but I wasn't going to pay. Yeah, this is, I'm definitely going to have to, that's going to pop off my head in a minute. I wasn't going to pay the price that Viseart were asking and then someone was selling it on Depop I think for about 15 quid so I'm like oh shitting I'll have me some of that 
I'm just going back along and really fluffing out that top there. I might actually try blending that out with some yellow. I'm being brave because normally if you blend a yellow out on a purple, you'll get brown. Not my favourite of colours. I'm just cleaning my brush off on a clean washcloth. Um, it's much, much kinder to your brushes than a colour switch, especially if you're using natural hair. This one isn't, this is a, um, this is a synthetic, if I can say it. Right, so I've cleaned the brush off. I'm going to go in with this matte yellow, which they're calling pastis. Just here. So, but I watched a film that my friend Laura, who is Gold Star Work, she's in New Zealand, she did. She's actually an artist. Um, and she was talking through colour theory and showing how you can blend purples out with other, or blend yellows out with other colours and she blended one out with a purple. So I'm going to try and see if I can be skillful enough to use this yellow to blend out the edge of this purple without it muddying up too much. So how's your day been? Has it been a good one? I hope it has. Well, if you're at the start of your day, then I hope it's going to be a good one. I think what I'm going to do is just pop some of the yellow all the way across first. And then try blending it. Yeah, I think that's a better idea. If you had a shitty day, I hope tomorrow's better. Hey, look at that, Laura, you'll be proud of me, I did it. I'm very much the kind of person who um, will sit down without a clue about how I'm going to recreate anything or what look I'm going to do and I'll find myself just being called instinctively to a colour. So I knew obviously the, the rules with this photo inspiration, there are literally two rules. You can only use colours in the photo. Obviously a certain allowance is made for how it can look different on different people's screens. So for me the water looks black. I've had times when looking at something on my phone something looks black and then I get it up on my laptop when I'm editing it and it's actually a really dark blue or a really dark green or a really dark purple. But whatever colours you see in the picture, well, that's the only colours you can use to recreate the look. You don't have to use all of the colours if you don't want to, but you cannot add any in. So for example on this picture I couldn't add in um, a red because there isn't one. I could add in a lime green because just as the, um, the sun is, is disappearing beyond the horizon. Is it the sun going beyond the horizon? Well, the light behind the horizon has like um, on my iPhone screen, it's almost got a sort of citrusy lime green tint just at the very, very bottom. So I could add some citrus green, but I couldn't add an emerald green because there isn't an emerald green on there. I couldn't add a red because there isn't a red on there. Um, but if I didn't want to use the black, for example, or I didn't want to use the citrus green that I can see, I don't have to. And that's it. And in terms of what you create on your face, it's entirely up to you. You can do an eye look. You can include the same colours on your lips. You don't have to. You can just do whatever you like on your lips. You could do a complete sort of 
mask right the way across where you're draping the colours all the way across and go really dramatic. It's entirely up to you. You just, you're creating a look inspired by the picture. That's actually really nice. I quite like that. I'm really quite pleased with how that's blended out. Nice. Right, let's clean this brush off. And then I'm going to grab one of these. This is a Morphe M321. It's a really tight little... It's like a pencil brush, but you've got a little bit more movement to it. And I'm just going to into my Hasina 2 I'm going to pick up some of this ash down here now this is a beautiful black it really is now I'm using a black bristled brush that's a really good choice bomber can't tell how much I've got on the brush so I'm going to go very gently initially in little tiny backwards and forwards movements to run that through my crease line and then once I've laid the colour down I'll go backwards and forwards and then um, without adding any more pigment on the brush just going to do really tiny little circular movements all the way along just to soften the edge of that black and then just pop some onto the outer corner here. I'll be tidying this edge up with a bit of my cellar watering at uh, the point when I start to put a foundation on. See what I mean about how good this black is? It really is lovely. This Hasina 2 palette is actually, if I had to just have one palette it would be this one. This I would choose this over all of my high-end ones, over my Jefferies, over my Anastasias, over my Viseartes, all of them. I would choose this Hasina too from Blush Tribe. Um, it's just a beautiful palette. There's not a single shade in it that I don't like or that doesn't work for me. It is stunning. Yes, I have a discount code with them. No, I don't earn from it. And I've not been sent a PR. I did get sent um, a thank you gift from the owner a little while ago, which was a palette and some brushes, which I'll be filming with uh, in the near future. That'll be up soon. So I'll explain more in that film, but I don't actually get PR from them, and I don't earn from them. But you can save money if you decide you want to pick this up. Um, Hasina 2 has been out of stock for bloody ages, by the way. Um, but Salma, the owner, is doing a pre-order at the moment. So if you want it, get onto Blush Tribe quickly. You can use Bomber or... If you don't want to use my code, you can use anybody's code really, there's quite a few floating around out there. Um, difference being that we don't earn from them. So, you know, it's not like we're shilling it like being a Morphe shill. <sighs> oh, I'm not the sort of person that would do that anyway. I'm crap at lying, you'd be able to see straight through me. 
but you can see for yourself how well this black is performing. Beautiful. Right. Clean the brush off. I'm now back to my Viseart palette. I'm going to grab one of these. This is a Jeffrey Morphe brush. It wasn't in one of the sets. It's one of the ones they sell separately. This is the <sighs> pale pink handle, white writing. Getting old. JS24. It's actually a lip brush. It's great for getting down into the inner corners here. Now, never put a wet brush into a pressed pigment. You will kill the pigment. Um, so I'm going to be using this Wet n Wild primer spray to wet the brush after I've picked the pigment up. Uh, I'm going to start off by going into Soleil, which is this beautiful yellow gold here. Well, these, um, this shimmer is really, really softly packed. I barely touch. Oh, hello, that pan's moving as well. I barely touched that and got an awful lot of kick up in the pan, so A, be careful, and B, the pan was twisting as I was moving the brush in it. Right, um, I always twist my brush, I always pop my brush in, in my hand like this and bend my fingers around it and then twist it to dry this ferrule off because you don't want any moisture getting down and loosening the glue that holds your bristles in. Right, so that you can see what's going on and I can see what's going on, I'm going to look into a little mirror down here. Uh, I'm not cutting the crease because I like to see whether or not the shimmers have enough pigment to stand up for themselves. And it looks like it does, yes. So, popping that into the inner corner, drying the brush off. Going back in and picking up some of that kick up. Rewetting the brush. And like I said, with this side, I do have to stretch it out. How far across did I go? I went about there. Because if I don't, I will end up with it cascading all down my face. Which, if you're going for the multicoloured freckle look, great. If you're not, not so great. Clean the brush off, pick up a little bit more pigment and just pop the dry pigment on over the top just to Help build that colour up because that black is a very, very strong black. I'm just going to grab this. <clears throat> okay, I know this looks dirty, but it's not. It's because I'm using charcoal micellar water at the moment. I'm just going to clean the black out of those inner corners there. That's better, I can see what I'm doing now. And while I'm doing it, I might as well do the sides. Mm. I don't like using tape to do this because if the tape is strong enough to hold tight to your skin so that no pigment gets underneath it, then when you're peeling it back off it's going to be stretching your skin out. don't like that idea at all. Right, I'm going to go into this shimmery, lavendery colour, which they're calling Bonbon, apparently. 
shake your bum bum, shake your bum bum, shake your bum. Wow, this is even softer than the gold was. Okay. The amount of kick up in that pan, you would not believe. Dry the ferrule off. And I'm going to pop this onto the middle half, or the middle half, the middle third of the lid. And just gently drag some of that gold across. I might actually pick a little bit more of that gold up. Just pull it across the lilac a bit and blend it together. <clears throat> Dry the brush off, back into the pan. I think this is a duochrome because it's almost got like a bluey shift to it. I almost wish actually that I had done a cut crease because this is not covering that black as well. But. It is my first time using the palette and I like to test palettes out so I will know in future. Yeah this has definitely got a uh, duochrome. I will know in future that I need to either not put as dark a shade in or cut the crease when I'm using this particular shade. Not that it's going to notice much once my eyes are open anyway, so I'm not overly fussed by that. Pick up a little bit of the gold again. Just to drag it across onto the lilac there. Right, I am going to pause you, my loves, while I put some foundation and whatnot on, and then I will be back to finish off this eye look with you. Now, for you, Poppet, there will be absolutely no delay at all. You will see me instantly. I, however, will see you the very next time that I press the record button. Hello, I am back. Uh, I used one of my deeper Anastasia blushes today and I actually remembered to tap it off on the back of my hand first because otherwise I get a little bit Coco the Clown looking. <clears throat> right, going back in with this flat top brush that we discussed earlier. And, oh, shall I go in with the black or shall I go in with the purple? I think I'll go in with the purple. And pull that on there. And then just run that along the lower lash line. I love this sort of brush. It's a, it's a liner brush, actually, for doing like eyeliner and stuff. But I much prefer it for doing this. I struggle with putting things in my waterline because I have such sensitive eyes. The minute it senses something in the waterline, it's like, I must remove this from my body. Um, even a contact lens, if I wear, I'm constantly getting goop in the corner of my eye there that I need to deal with because my body's like this is a foreign object and we do not want it thank you so 
that combined with my fibro which makes my, my eyes even more sensitive and hay fever putting anything in the waterline is uh, yeah it's not a good idea I do do it sometimes just to finish a look off and then grab some photos I can normally just about manage to get the photos before it starts to um, disintegrate right I'm actually going to go into my Hasina 2 palette and I'm going to pick up Iris which is this shade here this brush is from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette I love it though because it's flat topped but it's chunky so it's great for buffing out a lower lash line like this as you can see I used one of my Revolution brow pomades today in Royal Purple I'm really gutted they, they seem to have taken them off of their site um, I don't know if they've stopped doing them or if it's just a summer thing that will be back next year or if they're repackaging them, rebranding them changing the formula maybe, I don't know but I really hope they come back because I am proper getting into coloured brows and obviously Kat Von Disease I will not use any of her stuff on camera I've got a whole video about that if you wanted to I think I, I think I made a folder called Drama so that if people wanted to find it easily they can so I'm just really gently buffing out this lower lash line Hmm. pretty I love it when formulas work together because sometimes different formulas from different brands do not work well together at all uh, which can be a real bummer because it can really bugger up a look you know you can do a look it can be absolutely fantastic and then you get to the stage where you're putting on um, you know your, your deepening shade or whatever and if the two formulas don't mesh well together you know about it right I actually treated myself to one of these ambient the, the hourglass ambient strobe lighting powders this is euphoric strobe light and I'm gonna go in with this is just a brush that a lip brush that I bought for me by years ago I want to see what this fuss is about with these uh, powders and see if I can find a dupe for it in one of my cheaper options because I did find a dupe for the ambient dim light, the setting powder, this one, which you can use all over. The dupe for that is the Wet n Wild, <laughs> they call it a bronzer, but even Casper would struggle to use that as a bronzer, uh, in Reserve Your Cabana. Yeah, that's not giving me, this is the Gentle Lit From Within, which is not the look I'm going for. So, let me grab my ooh, Fenty beauty in fire crystal there we go I like to bring that along underneath the eye as well just to finish the look off I might pop a bit of this up under the brow actually because you all know me and my glowing so bright the gods can't see what I'm up to or as Teresa as Deb would say glowing like an alien that a slug right 
I'm going to pause you one last time while I bang some highlight all over my face, put some mascara on, choose a lipstick and I will be back with my finished look. Again, no delay for you. I am back. I actually use the Hourglass highlighter. So I'm glowing from within, but it's actually giving me more of a highlight than I was expecting, I will admit. A little bit of hand with bronzer there today, and um, if you're wondering, the bronzer is the Pineapple Sun from Too Faced. The Anastasia blush is Velvet from the blush trio Berry Adore, which is this one. Which is why I had to tap it off on the back of my hand first. The mascara is Catrice Glamour Waterproof. This is an absolute bang on dupe for Benefits Bad Girl Bang, but it's cheaper and it's waterproof. I think... Bad Gal Bang now have a waterproof version, but this is still cheaper. Um, I actually risked putting a little bit of this Colourpop Punch Gel Liner on my waterline. How long that will last for, who knows. And the lipstick is uh, a Physician's Forma, Formula Murumuru Butter. Uh, in moving to Brazil. So, this is my final look. Hair is living its own wildlife. I had someone describe it as um, my hair is representing my free spirit or something, and I absolutely loved that idea. So, you crack on hair, you do you. So, I am going to put the picture here again so you can have a look at it. What do you think? How well did I do at representing that picture in my finished makeup look? Which palettes would you use? Which colours call to you from that picture? Is it just the purple and the yellow or would you have gone for the black as well? Do you see colours in there that I don't? Um, I'd be really interested to know how you would interpret that. Which palettes you'd use, which shades you'd use, where. Um, let me know, please, in the comments. I'd, I'd really, really... I love interacting with all of you. I love when you put comments on that I can reply to and we can have a good old chit-chat in the comment. I love it. I don't care if you do, you know, great look or if you do six paragraphs. I just love hearing from you because it lets me know that you're actually enjoying what I'm doing. Uh, if you are one of my 4F babies though, please do double check you are still subscribed. YouTube are still unsubscribing people. Um, even if I'm appearing in your news feed, there's no guarantee you are still subscribed to me. So please just double check that. Once you've done that and you've either hit the yes or the no button, Thumb. If you hit the no thumb, tell me why. What was it you didn't like? Did you not like the picture? Did you not like the, what, the look that I'd done? Um, did you not like the palettes? Tell me. If you're going to put a thumbs down, tell me why. Because otherwise, how can I improve? But once you've done that, my darlings, I'm going to need you to go across to Nikki's channel and have a look and see exactly which palette or palettes or pigments or individual shades Nikki has used to recreate this picture. So far, I think this is now episode 35, so far there's only been two looks that have been similar and even those were not the same, they were still, you could look at them side by side and think yep they are definitely different looks, they're not exactly the same. Um, but all the others have been very, very different because everybody is inspired by something different from the picture. And that's what I love about this series. Two people can look at the same, quite colour restricted picture really. There's, there's really just shades of yellow, purple and black in there with a bit of white with the stars. Um, but, you know, two people can look at the same picture, even a colour restricted picture and produce two very different looks and it just shows you 
that just because when you see a beauty guru pick up, not that I'm a beauty guru, I'm definitely a, music, a makeup enthusiast, if you see someone pick up a palette and produce a certain look, and you think, well actually I would have done da 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 da, doesn't mean your look is wrong, just means you've been inspired in a different way. That's the beauty of makeup, it's our art, it's how we express ourselves. And at the end of the day, if we don't like the look we've done, we can wash it off and start again. Okay, if this is your first time to my channel, however, hi, hello, welcome, I hope you've enjoyed it here. Uh, I'm guessing if you've made it this far through, you must have liked it just a little bit. Uh, if you did, it'd be awesome if you too would like to join the 4F family by hitting that subscribe button and turning it from red to grey. We are by far the friendliest chatty group on YouTube and I'd be delighted if you would like to join us. Right, all that remains my darlings as ever to say is you'll stay fabulous and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.